Let's talk about coffee and kidney disease. What's the link? Does coffee help the kidneys or does coffee hurt the kidneys? In order to understand this question better, we have to start with an understanding of coffee. What's fascinating about coffee is, is that it has one of the highest consumptions of any beverage. Over 500 billion cups per year are consumed and it has over 1,000 ingredients in it. It's got lots of properties. It's an antioxidant. It has anti-inflammatory properties. It helps against cancers. It helps against clotting. It also helps against anti-fibrotic properties, so it helps against scarring inside the body. And there are lots of ingredients that are responsible for it. These are fancy names, but things like alkaloids, things like diterpenes, chlorogenic acid, melanotins, are all things that are part of coffee that may be responsible for all of these wonderful effects that coffee has. That's not to say coffee doesn't have side effects. There are known side effects. There's irritability, caffeine can cause decreased sleep, and we've talked about how important sleep is. But generally, coffee is safe to consume in about two to three cups per day. But what about with kidney disease? Well, with kidney disease, what we find is, is it's fascinating. One in seven adults in the United States has kidney disease. And kidney disease is the 12th leading cause of death. But what's really devastating to nephrologists or kidney specialists like myself is that kidney disease doesn't get the same attention as some of the other diseases. In fact, each year, kidney disease kills more people than breast or prostate cancer. So let's talk about the link between coffee and kidney disease. There's a new meta-analysis out, and the reason I like this meta-analysis is because one, it is one of the largest ones that's been done to date on coffee and kidney disease. And number two, not only did they look at what is the risk between coffee and kidney disease, they tried to quantify that risk by saying how many cups a day to get the best benefit or harm with kidney disease. And what was good about this study was that they had a lot of people included in the meta-analysis. Remember, meta-analysis is they take a lot of studies and put them together. So they had 12 studies with over half a million people in them, and they followed them anywhere between 6 to 24 years. So it's a very good amount of time for follow-up. All right, so what did they find? Well, first with kidney disease incidence, which means what is the likelihood of you getting kidney disease? Those people who were drinking one cup or less had a 13% decrease in risk of getting kidney disease. And for those people drinking two or more cups, they had an even better improvement. They had an 18% decrease in risk of getting kidney disease. So once again, one cup or two or more cups. And looks like the benefit was with two or more cups. How about the risk of end-stage kidney disease, which means going on dialysis? So anybody who was drinking any sort of coffee versus those who weren't drinking any coffee, those who drank coffee had an 18% reduction in risk versus those who didn't. And when they compared whether they drank one cup or two cups or more, there wasn't a difference. But the bottom line there was, if you drank coffee, you had a lower risk of progressing to dialysis. How about protein in the urine? We call that albuminuria, but it's a fancy way of saying is, as the pressure on the kidney gets worse and kidney damage occurs, the barrier on the kidney breaks and protein starts to go through the urine. So what happens to albuminuria? It's one of the best predictors for how fast your kidneys will decline. So the more protein you spill, the fat, I'm sorry, the more protein you spill in the urine, the faster your kidneys will decline. So those people who consumed coffee, any amount, had a 19% decreased risk of developing albuminuria. And what about the risk of dying from chronic kidney disease? Those people who drank any amount of coffee had a 28% decreased risk. So what's the bottom line here? First, this is a really large meta-analysis and it's a good one because it was actually done with quantifying the cups, large amount of population, lots of follow-up, Right? And what it shows is that, generally speaking, coffee is safe for chronic kidney disease patients. Now, it's not talking about things like potassium in coffee and how that can impact, and of course, you have to be careful about that. The other thing that was really good about this meta-analysis was that it links lower kidney disease incidence or the risk of getting kidney disease, lower risk of dying, lower risk of protein in the urine, and lower risk of going on dialysis with coffee. 
And then the last thing was that what this study is really showing is that the optimal amount of coffee really is about two to three cups per day. Now, that's based on this meta-analysis, but a lot of other studies as well. And what's fascinating about the other data is that people who drink decaf, if they can't tolerate the caffeine, they had the same benefits in those who drank caffeinated. Now, before we get all excited about the study, remember, this study is a population study. So what that means is it's only telling you there's a link. It's not telling you that there's a causation. It's also saying there isn't really any randomized control studies that they looked at. They were looking at population studies. Remember, the gold standard is randomized control studies. And then the last part is with population studies, there's always a chance there could be some confounding variables. Maybe all of the people who drank coffee were healthy and those who didn't drink coffee had lots of diseases. And that's why those people who didn't drink coffee got worse faster. So there's always a possibility. But bottom line, here is this is more evidence that coffee may be part of our healthy lifestyle if it's done in the right amount, which seems to be about two to three cups per day, caffeinated or non-caffeinated. Thanks so much for watching. Don't forget to subscribe. Don't forget to like us so that we can do more. And if there's a video you'd like to see, comment below so we can go ahead and make that. Thanks so much and we'll see you next time.